Hello everyone, so today we are going to be going over using PHPET to automate some Cisco switch configurations. So automation is a big topic of course in networking and there's many ways to automate things. There's Ansible, there's DNA Center, there's everything. I've found quite a bit of use in PHPET. Um, it's very simple, very easy to use and I think it's a good stepping stone into automation for most people because it's very simple at least to get started. There's a lot of things you can do, but the basic configuration or getting stuff off a switch is very easy. So first off, the main thing you wanna do is look, always look at the documentation. So the PHPET documentation is easy to find, it's online, and there's a little bit of difference between Linux and Windows, but it's all in the documentation. So for this video, we are going to be logging into one switch. We want to get the output of a show version command and then we want to save that on our, on our computer. So we're only going to be logging into one switch today. Of course with this you can spend on it and you can make it so that you can log into many switches at one time. You can do a loop and then log into each switch one by one and then get the information and add it to a file. Anything you want to do you can do. But this is just going to be the basic steps to log into a switch using PHPET and getting the information that we want. So right now, using CML, I have this switch set up with an IP address that I can reach from my virtual Linux machine. So with this, we should be able to log in, use the username and password of Cisco, get the show version, and then add it to a file on our computer. So for this video, you can see here that I'm using Python 3.6.8 with PHPET version 4.8.0. So the first step you need to do is make sure that you have Python 3 and PHPET. You, you can also use Python 2, but for this video I'm using Python 3. Alright, so let's get started. First off, we have a file, Python file here and we want to start off with, we want to uh, import our PHPET. Next, we want to import sys because we will need it to see what's going on, which we'll get to in a second. All right, so first off, as in our documentation, we want to spawn an instance of an SSH connection to our switch. So we can do this by saying pitspet.spawn and then the commands log in. So let's just go ahead and do that in our terminal first. So if we say SSH, Cisco at our IP address. You can see that we get the login banner and then we put in our password and then we are in the switch. So, so from here we can do show version and that's, that's, that's what we want to capture in this video. So we'll, we'll be doing that same, same steps but with PHPET instead of us typing it in ourselves. So we want to spawn a SSH instance and we'll say SSH, same thing as what we did before. All right, now that we did that, we want to expect what will, this, the switch will send us back. So when we logged in, it sent us back password. So we can use that. We'll say child, which is what we say here, the variable that we say here, dot expect and we'll say password. And this is also a regex, so you could say ignore case or you can match whatever you're you know, using regular expressions. Now that we did that, the next step is to send the password to log in. So we can say child or ch.sendline and then we'll say Cisco, which is our password. All right, now that we did that, what happens next? We log in and it comes up switch one greater than sign. So we'll say child.inspect, we'll say that. Now that we're here, we want to get the show version output. All right, so we can say child.sendline show version, which is what we did here. But there's one issue with that. So if we do it over here, show version, you might notice that we have this because you know it's split 
So what we can do is we can say terminal length zero. And then when we do it, it will spit out the, the whole thing. And we want to do that so that way it, we make sure that we capture all of it. So we'll do that before we do show version. And then we'll expect the greater than sign because that's what we'll get back in the meantime. All right, so now we SSH, we expect password as the prompt. We send our, our password, we expect the greater than sign because that's what that's a that's what comes up here, but this is pretty much guaranteed to pop up if our password's right. And then we'll say terminal is zero, which is allows us to see all of the output. And then we'll expect the greater than sign again. And then we'll do show version. So after that, we once again want to expect this, and then we want to exit because we got what we wanted, right? All right, so now that we did that, there's only one issue, and that's what it, that's why we imported sys up here. We want to be able to see what's going on, at least right now, so that way we can, if it messes up, we know where it messed up. So we can say up here that the log file equals sys.stdout.buffer, and that will the output of what it's of what Pitspec is seeing onto our terminal when we run the program. All right, so now let's go ahead and try it out. So we'll say Python, and then our file name, and it went fast. But you can see that we logged into the switch. We did the same thing as we did before, but this time it did it by itself. So it's great. You know we're we're getting somewhere now, but we still don't have the output into saved onto our computer. Hmm. So how can we do that? Well, there's a command which is before. So this will capture anything before the last inspect. So in this instance, we don't want to put it there. We want to put it after this one because that means that it will show us this. Anything be anything that came before this expect. So we'll say child that before. Now of course we want to save that data into a variable so that way we can get it. So we'll say at equals. So now that we got, we saved it into this, now we now what? We want to write it or somewhere. But for now we'll just print it. So we can make sure that we're on the right track. And you can see it after we exit the switch, which is right here, it printed out the output of Chauffeur. But it's not very readable right now. But we can fix that. So if we want to see it line by line, we can say split lines. So that will split on every new line. But since this is going to split it based on the new line, we need to print out each line. So for line and x, then we want to print line. Try this again, and there we go. There's line by line, the show version. You might notice that there's a B before every start at the start of every line. Well, that's because it's in bytes. So we can fix that by saying decode. And we wanted to code it to UTF-8. So now once we do that, do this again, and boom. We have the output saved into a variable, and it is, does it have the, the B before every line? All right, so that's one step closer, but we still don't have it saved onto our computer. It's easy enough, so we use the contacts manager to open a file. We'll say with open, we'll say output text. And then we'll say we want to overwrite anything that's already there as file. And then we want to say for lines and same as before, but this time we're writing to a file instead of just printing it. 
and we'll say file because we named it, opened it as file dot write. We'll say lines, and then if you want to put uh, something special after each line, or you want to put a new line, you can just not the most elegant way, but you can just put that. So that means that it will open a file called output.txt. It will overwrite a file if it's already there. And then for each line in the in the child.before, it will print out each line and then a new line. So let's try this. We'll take out the print, so that way we don't see that. Run this again. Oh, we got an error because we put lines instead of line. So let's try it one more time. All right, so now let's see what's in that file. You can't really notice anything changed because it shows us everything that we just saw. But it's a separate file because you can see I put I typed in cat output.txt, which is what we saved it as, and you can see we got our information into a file on the computer. So this might give you a starting point where you can take what you learned here and you know expand it to do more things. I would hi highly recommend that you look at the documentation and in the future I'll make more videos expanding on this and going into more advanced topics. If you have any questions please let me know in the comments and thank you for watching.